Good morning and welcome back to Morning Joy, where truth matters. I'm your host, Keith Downey, and we're going to be talking about hitting that reset button when we disobey God. What do we do? Well, Debbie and Adam are going to give us some tips, and you can call in. Give us your thoughts on it all. 877-757-9424. Good morning, Debbie and Adam. Good morning, Keith. Thank you so much for having us on The Next yeah. Right Thing. And yes, the phone lines are open, 877-757-9424. If you have something to say about the uh, the news or, or the word of the day or about how to hit the reset uh, button when you've kind of spiritually messed up uh, in big ways, small ways, we're going to be talking about that. If you have something to say about this segment, please call in right now. We do have a lot of activity on YouTube and Facebook and Keith, you probably should wave to them because they're they're going strong. So Keith is waving to you. Um, but please call in 877-757-9424. Adam, um, how do we hit the reset button when we have um, spiritually disobeyed and broken God's, God's commandments and we've you know, in small ways, big ways, what do we do? I mean, shame, shame faced is the, is the word of the day. We, we, we understand that. And, and going into shame is a, is a very easy thing to do when you messed up. What would you tell our listeners, our wonderful Morning Joy family this morning? Good morning, Deb. So, yeah, I see this a lot over, you know, over the years in the work that I do. I see it in my own life. So here we are, we're, we've moved a little bit into Lent. And what happens for most of us, we're not used to doing extra things beyond going to Mass and going to Mass on holy days. And here we are and, you know, we're, we're trying to do something throughout the week, uh, particularly on Fridays. And we have a resolve for a few days and just like a New Year's resolution, we stumble. And then the, the temptation then is to just give up right say oh okay i blew it i'm just gonna you know kind of ignore this from here and we don't want to do that so there's three versions of resetting your spiritual life there's the moment to moment the one that happens over days and the one that happens over months or years in the moment to moment let's say i'm sitting in mass and i'm focusing on mass and you know i'm following along i'm you know responding or praying when i'm supposed to and I have, let's say I get distracted and I start thinking about the laundry or something else, or I start, you know, I have an intrusive thought that's a sinful thought, and I lose track of mass for a few moments. What do you do in those moments, that moment-to-moment -moment stumbling? Well, I think there's a few things, and we know, we know some of this from psychology. So first off, let it go and re-engage. And what do I mean by that? I mean, don't get flustered and don't try to not think of something we've talked about that before when you say don't think of a purple elephant the first thing your brain does is think of a purple elephant so you don't want to try to wrestle with intrusive thoughts you want to just let it go and refocus on what's going on in the mass and forget that you that you got distracted and let it go if you try to wrestle with it it'll just get worse if it's going on and on and you're continuing to struggle through mass and you're finding that it's you know uh, uh, very much a burden and that's not part of your normal life. Ask Jesus for help as you're struggling with that, that it keeps coming back. Ask Jesus, you know, and you're just in your own words, silently in your mind, Lord, you know, I'm really struggling with this. I don't want to ignore you in this moment. Uh, please give me the grace to stay engaged in what I'm doing, whether it's praying the rosary or being in mass or, you know, spending some time with the Lord in some other way, adoration, etc. So the moment to moment is let it go, re-engage. Don't get flustered, don't give up, and don't wrestle with the thoughts, just reorient your attention. The second version, and that's what a lot of us are wrestling with right now as human beings, is the one over days. So I, I missed mass, I forgot to pray, I forgot to fast. Um, whether I just forgot about it, whether I was annoyed and I just decided not to do it because this is too much of a change in my life, or maybe it was an emergency or I was uh, traveling and I just couldn't do certain things like get to mass. Okay, again, don't get discouraged. Don't give up. If it was out of your control truly, that's okay then. You're not culpable. You're not responsible for that because you're doing what you can do in life. You know, when there's something unavoidable, you just can pick up and continue where you're going. You don't need to confess that if you truly have no choice. But if you did drop the ball, 
really critical. Don't forget God is always there for you. God never gives up on you. If you drop the ball, repent between you and Jesus. If you need to go to confession, go to confession and just get up and start again. Don't think that don't think that Jesus has gotten frustrated with you or he's going to give up on you or you know, let's just forget it. You know, he, he's not going to accept my efforts. No, just start again from this moment right now. And if it was for the fasting on Friday, get to confession for that. If it was something little, um, just pick yourself up, dust yourself off and keep going. And the third one is the months to years. And I see this a lot in the work that I do kind of doing intake interviews with people that have um, very extraordinary spiritual problems. And they'll say, well, I haven't been to mass in a while. And I always say, well, what, what's a while? Is it days, weeks, months, years? Oh, years. Okay. How many? Well, about 10 or 15. So you see this uh, a lot in people's lives is they fell and they never got back up. Okay. So here you are, you haven't been to Mass in years, you haven't been to confession in years. You realize, hmm, boy, maybe I should be doing this. Maybe a loved one passed on. Maybe something happened that reminded you that, you know, your religious and spiritual life is important. At least commit to going to confession to get out of mortal sin. I would say that's a really important step that if you do nothing else, or in mentally in terms of saying what I'm going to do here, Get to confession, get out of mortal sin, meaning like you missed Mass, you gave up on Mass, you gave up on confession. Um, you know, confession is at least once a year, Mass is Sundays and days of obligation. By getting to confession, that often helps clear up your thinking and helps build your resolve. Secondly, if it's, you really, you know, you've got your own reasons and, and uh, they're very serious, and maybe it's complicated. Make an appointment and talk with your priest. Ask for an appointment to sit down with Father for a half hour, for an hour, and talk it through. What are the reasons? Why did I stop engaging? You know, whatever it is. Have that human person-to-person -person connection. Remember, just like the other ones, God never gives up on you. He is always waiting for us. He is always yearning for us. Move towards him and he's going to reach out towards you. Okay, you can always come back no matter how long it's been, no matter what you've done, mercy is there. And then the last one, especially when it's been months to years, ask people to pray for you. If you're really struggling to take these steps, ask loved ones or other people to pray for you. And those are some of my thoughts on resetting the spiritual those are, life. Those are great thoughts, Adam. And so if you have something to say about it, our Morning Joy family, please uh, call in right now, 877-757-9424, 9424 Call in. Maybe you're in one of those positions. You want to ask some questions. You want to share your journey. We're here to journey together, like Keith says, every single weekday morning. I love that. So please... Please, um, Tim is waiting to pick up uh, the call, and it's we're a safe, friendly platform for you to call in, 877-757-9424. But Adam, I just wanted to say before we hit the pause button, um, I agree with you, and I and I, I go back to St. Teresa of Avila, some say Avila, when, when she used to stand outside the confessional with her sisters, and she would, here go the phone lines, thanks you guys, you're all responding, that's wonderful. Um, she used to stand outside the confession line when her sisters would come out of confession and she put her hands on their, I think, shoulders or after they would finish the sacrament. And she would say, um, begin again or begin anew. Mm -hmm. And so that, and, and, and it's so true, Adam, because I think one of the problems that you're talking about, you know, shame faced and being in shame, it, it can lead to despair, which is really a horrible place to be. And that's where you always say, Adam, the demons want us to go to. They want us to go to that deep, dark place. And that's terrible but with our god our god is a, a god of of reset and comebacks and and our god is there to help us on this journey and 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 he amazingly um is there to pick us up um brush us off and, and let us keep running this race i think it's i think that's an interesting thing i hope our listeners today are hearing that clearly because i know for even for myself in my own life you do certain things or you don't do certain things and you you think about it continuously going i i should have done that or i shouldn't have done that this is and you constantly let that ruminate that's not a good thing right adam 
Yeah, exactly, Deb, because in terms of the temptation to give up and despair of God's love, to despair of our spiritual life, our religious life, um, that's where the enemy wants us. The enemy wants us looking backwards at our sins and feeling shame um, and, and just judging ourselves harshly and imagining that God is judging us harshly and we should just give up you know, you've gone too far, it's too much, mm -hmm. he doesn't love you. Um, those are the things the enemy wants to say, and, and that's why it's right. so important to look forward and not look back. Well, and the other thing you just said there, too, I don't you think pe people feel, because I know I've felt this, that you've lost, you've lost traction, you've lost ground with God. So, you know, <clears throat> maybe I should just like, you know, forget about it, because it didn't, it, it wasn't perfect enough, and it, and it didn't feel right. So now I'm going to walk away. Don't you don't you think sometimes that can be human nature? Oh, completely. Yeah, we, we tend to judge ourselves harshly when we do judge ourselves. You know, we tend to idealize ourselves and rationalize our behavior and say, well, I'm a good person. You know, uh, this isn't so bad. But when we turn on ourselves and judge ourselves, we tend to take the extreme also and just say, well, I'm just going to give up because, you know, it, I'm not worth it. It's, it's gone too far. And one thought about that, Deb, how many saints came back from lives of you know wanton sin sometimes those become some of the great saints that teach us so much and so in the end i'm not saying sin is good but god brings good out of these trials in our lives and sometimes we gain wisdom from that trial and that same wisdom we can pass on to others you know i'm thinking of saint augustine and his confessions um, and all the lessons that he shared with people um, through his story. So don't think that God has ever given up on you or can't use you for good. Beautifully said. Okay, Dwight is in Allen, Texas, listening on KATH AM 910 on GRN. That's Guadalupe Radio Network. Hi, Dwight. Welcome. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, very well, sir. Thank you. Go right ahead. Um, I just wanted to take the opportunity to to uh, express uh, my appreciation for uh, over the last two weeks um, what I have been hearing uh, because I've been wanting a more uh, meaningful and a deeper journey uh, during this length as I spoke with the person on the other end earlier. I'm relatively new to uh, the Catholic faith. Uh, this coming Easter vigil will be five years um, mm -hmm. for me, and Lent has never been more meaningful uh, to me. And just to hear uh, the richness and, I mean, just the nuggets that's been shared over the last two weeks has been very uh, encouraging to me, and I just wanted to have the opportunity to share that. Mm. Oh, Dwight, that just, that really warms our hearts and makes our day. You have no idea, sir. Thank you so much. First, I, I want to say welcome home. Um, you're on a beautiful uh, journey, five years. I love that. You're going deep during Lent, and we've got more to come on Morning Joy uh, during this Lenten season, but I, I'm going to turn it over to my co-host, Adam Bly, um, from the Spirit World. Uh, Adam, isn't this beautiful news and, and wonderful kind words from Dwight? Yeah, thanks so much, Dwight, for the encouragement. And, you know, for for everybody who's uh, contributing and, and ultimately, of course, it's the Lord reaching out to you through whatever whatever it is that's inspiring you in your life. It's, it's all Him and it's His grace that kind of guides you to unpack and get what He wants you to get out of it. And I would just, you know, you sound like you, you have a spiritual maturity to understand that it's a, it's a journey um, and I would just encourage you that every year you're going to get something new out of it. Um, you're going to grow. You're going to deepen your understanding. Don't feel like, you know, some people feel like they have to understand all the Catholic faith right away or um, all the layers to things, the, the richness that's built up over 2,000 years. Um, but you're going to, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful journey. You're going to experience it in, in different ways and deeper ways as the years go on. And whatever the Lord's inspiring you to do or understand or grow in this year, that's that's where he wants you and that's where it's at. So, um, yeah, I just I just encourage you to each year um, look for new and deeper aspects of things and, and just keep growing. It's it's a wonderful thing. 
Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And we'll pray for you, of course. Oh, absolutely. You. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've got a family here, Dwight, and we're, you know, call us anytime. Um, Adam and I, of course, we're, we're on the weekdays for the next right thing, but we have the spirit world on the weekends, and it's a live call-in show the whole entire hour um, oftentimes. And, and Dwight, I, I want to just share with you this. Um, I just finished a conference this past weekend in Alexandria, Louisiana, and it was wonderful. It was the Fullness of Truth Conference. It's just an amazing, I believe, anointed conferences. And I I had the privilege and the opportunity to talk about Blessed Carlo Acutis. And the, the what's so amazing about this young millennial saint, Dwight, is he's not just for the millennials and he's not just for the young people. He is for all of us because when he received communion at age seven, he never missed mass again until he died when he was 18, I'm sorry, 15 years old. That's eight years. And you're talking this little kid at seven years old, he knew how to connect with God and stay connected through mass every day, through the rosary every day, through adoration, through meeting other people and and being Christ to others for being kind and, and, and showing all the works of mercy. And this young powerhouse of a saint was able to teach us how to stay connected. You know, the parable, the vine and the branches, amazing. Stay, remain in me. That's how many, Jesus uh, said that uh, like 10 times in that parable, remain in me. And I just, I, I pray that for you, Dwight, that you stay very connected to God each and every day. And then God just works through you and your journey to help everyone around you. What do you say? I say that's amazing. Uh, I'm very encouraged. Uh, about to get a little emotional here, but uh, I am just so grateful. And, and like I said, uh, before I even uh, tune in uh, on uh, during the week, when you all are on, I had it had already been in my mind and in my spirit, you know, this thing about deepening uh, my mm-hmm. faith. And mm-hmm. when I turned the radio on, that was one of the first things that I heard. And yeah. I, I, I was just, you know, it's just great. Mm -hmm. I'm really, I'm really humbled by it. I really am. Well, that's how much God loves you. And I, I really believe, I really believe it, Dwight. I've been doing radio work for a long time now. I believe God is using the radio airwaves to reach each and every one of us very personally, very intimately. It's a beautiful thing. God is, it's God's megaphone. He's using it in such great ways. And, and I, and for you to give your story today, you have, you, you just have no idea how many souls you have helped today. You helped my soul. It really enriched my, my spirit. I just want to say thank you to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Any final comments, Keith or Adam? Uh, aside from a belated welcome home, no, thank you so much, Dwight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Have a great day. You thank you. God bless you. Have a beautiful week. Okay, so this is what the next right thing's all about, you guys. It's, it's an opportunity for us to come together. And I see I'm getting emotional now because we should journey together. We should support each other. That's what the body of Christ does. We shouldn't tear each other apart. We should really build each other up. And I just heard that in the beautiful words of Dwight. What do you say, Adam? Yeah, um, it's this Lent is just a real opportunity. I would again just to to echo a little bit what we said in in uh before this call don't give up Mm -hmm. last thing you want to do is give up jesus is always there he's yearning for you um if you haven't started lent don't be shy start it now um if you've stumbled that's okay dust yourself off move forward don't Mm -hmm. look back look forward and just participate the grace is there you know, the Father loves you, Jesus loves you, the Holy Spirit loves you. This is a particular time of the year for a lot of us because Lent asks us to do a little more and asks us to remember by doing little things during the week. We remember our faith, we remember our religious practices more during the week. Take this as an opportunity. Don't take it as a burden. Take it as a gift because it is. It may not feel like it this time around, 
but it is a gift that's going to pay dividends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And always remember, when you hit that, when you have that setback, God is preparing your comeback. I think we we uh, determined that today, um, as in our conversations, with uh, just wonderful way to uh, encourage and inspire all of you to keep going deeper during Lent. Wow, this has just been a great show so far. But um, uh, Keith, we're going to turn it back to you because we've got to get out of the way because the one, the only Monsignor Charles Pope is up next and we all want to be listening intently to what he has to say and share with us because he's always teaching us something new and it's mm. very very deep absolutely and thanks again debbie georgiani and adam bly so much for giving us a rundown of what we should do when we we slip up uh, and disobey god so thank you so much you can always catch them obviously every single weekday here on the next right thing but on saturdays of course on the spirit world uh, 10 a.m. Central. So make sure to stand by for that. But, um, you know, I didn't get a chance to uh, to do our question of the day. So we're going to do that right now before we head on to break. So our Catholic trivia, our question for today is, what does the name Jesus mean in Hebrew? What does the name Jesus mean in Hebrew? If you know the answer, you got to go to grnonline.com slash joy. That's grnonline.com slash joy. You'll scroll down all the way to the bottom and you'll pick your answer. You do. We do have a prize, by the way. Yes, you have the potential of winning the Diary of St. Gemma, which was given to us by Jordan Burke. It's incredible. She teaches so many things. I'll touch on it in the next hour, but stay tuned. We've got Monsignor Charles Pope talking about IVF. Stay tuned. See you after this break. You're listening to Morning Joy, where truth matters. <laughs> 